Hey everyone, and welcome to another video presentation. In this one, we are going to be looking at some automatic transmission components. Namely, we're going to be talking about a planetary gear set. Now, these are going to be found in most automatic transmissions. There are some manufacturers who've actually avoided using this. Uh, namely, what comes to mind is Honda. Throughout the years, I don't believe they've actually had a planetary gear set until recently. But most automatic transmissions, again, we're talking about conventional ones, nothing, uh, nothing terribly complex, and we're not, you know, we're leaving out the, the, the hybrid side of things, electric vehicle side of things, and like dual clutch transmissions. We're just ruling that out. We're just looking at a typical conventional automatic transmission. Well, they're going to have something like this inside of there. Now, with regards to something like an eight-speed transmission, it's a little bit more complex than just using something like this. But basically, the, the principles are going to stay the same. So that's why we're going to look and investigate uh, this planetary gear set, just to kind of understand what's involved with it, how it works, and that way kind of you get a bit more familiarity or a little bit more of a concept for what's going on inside these transmissions. So, ultimately, your planetary gear set is going to consist of several different pieces. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to remove this little thrust washer from here so we can kind of get a better idea of what's going on in there. We have a centralized piece right here which is known as the sun gear. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this out of here. So we have a sun gear. This part may be a little bit difficult to remove but I will do my best while keeping it in frame. We also have this piece right here which is known as the carrier assembly. Now the carrier is going to have, you can see I rotate this and we can see these smaller pinion gears. The carrier is going to contain the planetary pinion gears. Now the pinion gears, I may have to let's get this thing out of here. There we go. So I'll pop, here we have another thrust uh, washer down here. So in reality, the on an actual planetary gear assembly, these pieces come apart a lot easier, but since it's 3D printed, it's a little bit more difficult, hence why I had to kind of cut that portion out. But uh, this slides out of here, and if you notice on the carrier assembly, we have these planetary pinions. And even though they are all located on the carrier assembly, they're not physically going to be rigidly held in place, meaning they can basically idle and freewheel on each one of these little pinion shafts on the carrier assembly. So even though this kind of rotates as one, it's important to note that each one of these planetary pinions can actually rotate independently from each other. And that's because of the way they're mounted on the carrier assembly. So that's the carrier assembly, our sun gear in the middle. And then finally, we have what's known as the ring gear assembly. And they have these internal teeth that face towards the, well, inside. And that basically encapsulates everything. If you notice these little notches on the outside, this is just to sort of represent, like, this could be either spline to... You know, a transmission case or be part of a clutch pack that can either hold or release this, but we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. So yeah, the the easiest way to remember something like this is think of a think of the solar system, with regards to the sun being in the center, and then the planets revolve around the sun. So that's kind of how you remember this. And of course, the ring gear. Well, that's just a ring gear. No real analogy on that, but. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put these pieces back together and we'll kind of look at how everything operates as a whole. And through the magic of video editing we can see that everything is put back together instantaneously. Now in reality if I had an actual planetary gear set I would do that real time. Everything, everything basically just slides in and out fairly easily on there. Sometimes it can be a pain to kind of for instance uh, get the sun gear to line up with the pinning gears, especially if they're they're helical, it tends to be a bit uh, finicky. Uh, but with a with a normal one, it's not too bad. With a 3D printed model, this one right here, whenever the layers are deposit, or basically whenever it builds up the model in layers, you get these little ridges. Kind of makes things a little bit more difficult to put together. But anyway, ignoring that. Uh, I'm actually going to leave this thrust washer out of the way, and the reason why I included this is oftentimes in the transmission, rule of thumb, anytime two components go together in the transmission, which you guys will find out anytime you're rebuilding a transmission, any component that's in contact with one another, is, there needs to be some sort of anti-friction measures installed to prevent excessive wear. You cannot have metal against metal. That's that's a bad thing, right? So with transmissions, a lot of times what you'll find is there's a lot of thrust forces generated, meaning the natural rotation of gears, 
especially when they're helical, not so much these spur gears, but they generate what's known as axial or thrust forces. So you need these thrust bearings to control those forces generated in there. And if you just have metal against metal, it's not gonna end very well. So you have a type of bearing surface on here, which is the wear surface, but it's a softer metal. It's designed to kind of reduce that friction on there, control uh, those thrust forces on there without preventing, again, direct metal to metal contact. So that's why I have these here. But I'm going to pop this off of here. And what I'm going to do, you can see that, or here I'll rotate this all the way. Yeah. You can see there's a mark here on the carrier assembly, a mark on the sun gear, and then a mark on the ring gear. And we can actually use that to kind of figure out what's going on with the overall rotation as we change, basically as we go from different gear ratios and different interactions between different inputs and outputs. And I'll explain what I mean in a second. So I'm actually going to get this thrust washer and put it out of frame. So the interesting thing about these planetary gear sets is we're basically able to get multiple gear ratios out of this guy and have it be in a nice, relatively compact package right here. Now, traditionally, if you're using spur gears, which are these, these are type of straight cut gear, if you wanted to do something like get a, uh, a high gear ratio, say something like three to one, four to one, you know, you would use a smaller gear and drive a larger gear, and then you could have like an idler gear in between there. But the point is it would take up, the, the more you add on to the overall length, uh, it basically will increase the amount of real estate or room that you need to actually house everything together. Whereas you can take that idea, take something that, you know, initially t took up this much space and fit it into something like this, which is a lot more compact. And it's still achieving the same thing. It's just really cool how they do that. So, in, the ter in terms of actually practicality on a vehicle, well, let's look at... First, we're going to look at how this thing kind of works, and then we'll kind of give you some practical demonstrations with this or some examples. So, generally speaking, uh, practic So this is a this is able to actually give you six different gear ratios based off of now with planetary gear sets. Ultimately, how power transfer is able to occur is you need to remember these things. You need to hold a component, one of these components, the carrier, sun, or ring gear and then drive another component in order for power transfer to occur. So again, you must drive a component like a sun gear, and you must hold a component like a ring gear for power transfer to occur. Now I mentioned how there's six gears that are theoretically possible, but, but due to design limitations and practicality purposes, oftentimes you can really only get like uh, two to three gears out of each planetary gear set. Now there are very creative ways that they actually tie one planetary gear set into another one and then you have some more complex versions of this something like a, a Ravignol gear set paired with this which forms what's known as like a Le Peltier gear train that they often use on a lot of these uh, higher, uh, higher gear transmissions or higher speed but again we're not going to talk about that just uh, we're just going to look at the simple portion of this so first thing we want to look at whenever we're looking at this planetary gear set is we want to examine what happens whenever we... So what, what does that actually mean whenever we hold a component and drive a component? How does power transfer occur, and how are we getting these different gear ratios? So practically speaking, again, design limitations and all, we're only getting a couple actual usable gears out of this, just because of the way it's inside of the transmission and what you can actually do with your clutch packs and whatnot. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to represent a low gear, something like a 3 to 1 or 4 to 1, gear ratio and against a high gear ratio number but they classify it as a low gear because you know you're like first second gear something like that so in order for a low gear to be achieved on this all you simply have to do is i'm going to again i'm going to use my sun gear as the drive gear and remember that's one step we need to drive a component but then we also need to hold a component in order for power transfer to occur so then the second thing i'm going to do is i'm going to hold the ring gear and rotate the sun gear and then the result of that is, well, let's just see what happens. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my old Makita drill. And hopefully it's not too loud. I'm going to kind of keep this out the way. And what I want you guys to do, hopefully, I'll kind of hold it like this so you can see what's happening at a better angle. I'm going to, again, this is my drive unit. Sun gear is going to be the driving one. And then we'll just see what happens whenever I hold the ring gear. So 
Something worth noting, pay attention to this little mark right here compared to the mark on the sun gear, and we'll watch it go around. Notice anything interesting about that? See how fast the sun gear is rotating relative to the carrier assembly? And by the way, that's what's happening with this one. Whenever I hold the rain gear stationary, I'm physically keeping this, stopping it from rotating. Now the result of that is whenever the sun gear rotates, these planetary pinion gears are being, are basically rotating. They're forced to walk around this rain gear that I'm keeping from moving. And so, again, the reason why that works is because each one of these planetary pinions is able to rotate on that pinion shaft of the carrier. So the result is the whole carrier assembly basically has to walk or rotate within the ring gear. Again, because I'm keeping this stationary, I'm preventing this from moving. And what, and what actually does that is you'll have something like a clutch pack or a band that will physically lock and prevent the ring gear from moving, right? And whenever that happens, this could be something like an input shaft and turbine speed shaft, it doesn't matter. They're both the same thing. But basically that could be your input drive force rotating this, and the carrier could be attached to something like your output shaft. And ultimately your output shaft is gonna be connected to the drive wheels. So whenever I do this, prevent this from moving, and this represents again our input shaft. And if this is connected to our output shaft, the carry assembly, well, if the output shaft's rotating, that means that since it's connected to the drive wheels, that means our drive wheels rotate through the final drive gear and all that good stuff, right? So that's sort of what's happening whenever I drive the sun gear and I hold the rain gear. Now, what I was telling y'all is if you look at the rotational speed of the sun gear compared to the carrier, you'll notice that it's rotating several times for every one rotation of the carrier assembly. This is what's known as an underdrive gear ratio. The actual gear ratio number is high, and on this one, it's about a 3 to 1 ratio. So what I'm going to do is I'll line these marks up. That's our start point. Hold it about the 12 o'clock position. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going, we can keep track and see how many times the sun gear rotates for every one revolution of the carrier. So let's take a look again at this. So that's one rotation, two, and this is about a three to one gear ratio if I use this sun gear as my drive gear and the carrier is my driven. And then the reason why that works again is because I'm holding the rain gear stationary, I'm forcing the carrier the planetary pinions to sort of rotate and walk around or walk within the ring gear assembly as I'm driving the sun. And so the result is you get something like a three to one gear ratio, meaning that we are operating in a low gear, like first gear. And the result is we have a slower output speed, but with three times the torque. So if we have like 50 foot pounds being fed into here, or sorry, fed into the sun gear, then the output gear coming out of there, due to torque multiplication, you get three times the torque, or 150 foot-pounds coming, coming off of there, right? So that's how we can use gear ratios to exploit and modify the torque that's going through the transmission. So when every vehicle is starting out at slow vehicle speeds, that's where torque is more, is more important to get it up to speed, to where it takes a lot of force and effort to get a vehicle going, and then you can do stuff like shift gears to start transitioning from a low gear, like three to one, to something like a direct drive and then your overdrive. So that was that example. Now what I'm gonna do, same thing. My sun gear I'm gonna use as my input drive gear. And let's hold another component to see what happens. So in this one, I'm actually going to hold, or attempt to hold, this one will be a little bit trickier. I'm going to hold this carrier assembly stationary while I drive the sun gear. And we're gonna see what happens on there, so. And again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up some of these marks. So in this one, I'm going to line up the sun gear and that ring gear. That kind of gives you a hint on what's going to happen. But let's see what happens whenever I hold this. Told you it's tricky to hold on to. Woo. One more time. So something interesting happens with this. Whenever we hold the carrier stationary, whenever this sun gear rotates clockwise, these pinion gears are rotating counterclockwise, and whenever they rotate counterclockwise, the result of that, well, clearly you can see, look at what happens with the rotation of this ring gear. It also is going to rotate counterclockwise. So the output is rotating in a different direction compared to the input. Now what gear do you think that would be? 
That could be something like reverse. That's where they can physically, uh, they'll physically couple, well, for example, you know, they can, physically, they can physically couple the ring gear to the output shaft and the result of that, and the result of the input shaft rotating clockwise, whenever we have like a clutch pack or something like this connected to the output shaft, well, the result is the output shaft's gonna now rotate in the opposite direction compared to before, and the result is your vehicle is able to back up. And again, just using this as an example, I'm not saying that's for every single vehicle, but most of the time if you wanna go in reverse, it's as simple as, well, the planetary carrier being held stationary while you drive uh, like the sun gear, and the result is, well, the rotation changes on there, clearly, we can see that. So the, another example I'm gonna give is what if we want something like, again, we're taking off from a stop. We'll say this is a, this represents like a simple two speed transmission. So realistically, two speeds or two gear ratios that we can get from this and a reverse gear. So we already saw like a low gear or underdrive gear ratio, like a three to one. And then we just saw a reverse gear but what happens if we want to do something like a one-to-one -one gear ratio? Well, how is that achieved? So with this one, in order to actually get a one-to-one -one rate, well, what we're seeing is, remember, in order for power transfer to occur, we're driving a component, holding a component. If you want reverse, we drive the sun gear, hold the carrier, and we get reverse. If you want something like a low gear, we drive the sun gear, hold the ring gear, and then we get a low gear for this one, something like first gear, three-to-one ratio. But what if we some, want something like a direct drive? Well, you could do something like, what if we did something like if we lock the ring and carrier together or we lock the carrier and sun gear together? Well, just for ease of demonstration, I'm going to hold the ring and the carrier together. So let's just say there's a clutch pack that links them both together. Well, since they are effectively locked together, if I, whenever I try to rotate the sun gear, Obviously, it's going to try and rotate these planetary pinions because they're meshed with it all the way around, right? But they're not able to rotate on the pinion shafts because, well, we're physically, we're locking the carrier to the ring gear. So the carrier isn't free to rotate within the ring gear like earlier, right? And because of that, well, the whole thing will literally rotate as one. And what that means is, well, one rotation of the input, our drive gear, the sun gear, that's going to result in one rotation of the output side of things. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. One rotation of the input, basically it would, it would be like this. Let's line these up. So if I lined up the sun and the ring gear, well, if these were physically, if the carrier and the ring gear were locked together like this, you can see that we'll run one rotation of the input, our sun gear, results in one rotation of the whole assembly because this effectively is act acting like one locked up unit, one solid piece. So in that example, that would be, again, like a one to one ratio, meaning whenever our input shaft rotates once, our output shaft rotates once because of that. So this is basically, this was basically a planetary gear set in a nutshell, what's kind of going on inside of there. Obviously I left out quite a bit. There's a bit more, there's a bit more involved with automatic transmissions, but just know that effect, essentially they're using electronically controlled devices like solenoids to direct hydraulic pressure to your different clutch packs and bands to basically do what I was showing you here. The goal of that is to basically, they're holding different components and they're driving different components with these clutch packs. And the way that these clutch packs engage with them is while they'll have like spline cutouts here, they are ultimately like on this, uh, on the sun gear, there would also be a spline connection to that where your input shaft would spline into there. You have snap rings holding everything together. There'd be spline components on the carrier. And again, it gets very complex whenever you take apart these automatic transmissions or it seems overwhelming, but that's basically what's going on inside of these things. So I hope that kind of makes sense and I'll see you guys next time.